What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my, own, uh, my Napoleon Total War 3 campaign as Sweden and in this episode we will be attacking the Danish capital and destroying the Batavian Republic. So we have doubled up our forces here, we have Anders Skoldebrand who will be attacking uh, attacking the city itself with Henrik von Essen. Hans Henrik von Essen um, as reserve don't necessarily think it will be needed, but be careful because we've got a large amount of cavalry and I'm starting to learn in this campaign that uh, cavalry is king. Cavalry is very much king. So that's why I've got a good component, a good contingent of my own cavalry, but I'm going to want to rely on a lot of dropping into square at the appropriate moments. Um, they have no defences. We're going to attack the city. and Let's take this major step forward. And it also means that we then have a good um, landing pad to advance on to Brussels in future. And then bring the war to the French. That will be... Uh, quite an out, quite a good outcome for us, I think. We have another force. We have a force in Hanover. A solid wall of troops to the Quiet, you. Okay, so we're going, to, we're going to want to advance through the trees. So in the centre, I'm going to have a mixture of in Delta and militia because I don't want my militia to get caught out on the flank. One of our militia units, though, veterancy three. I mean, it doesn't result in too much, too many improvements. Although it does give them, from a morale standpoint, they're just as good as. Oh no, they're not. Oh, that's quite okay. So veteran three militia is as good as has twenty morale, the same as stock in delta, which isn't bad. The accuracy in reloading is getting a lot better. And um, then on the right flank, I'm going to. Although, even though that might still be too big. Let's detach two units. And add them on to... A couple of um, Vavade infantry. Uh, Vavade, Bjornborg and my foot guards. They can push the right flank. These men are going to go up through the centre, through the trees. This detachment is going to push up a flank. And then I've got a unit of foot guards and skirmishers to advance the left. Let's put two light dragoons on the left. Put a light dragoon and a heavy cavalry further on the right. General in the centre. From a terrain perspective, that's not a bad spot to put a 12 pounder. The six pounder, if I can get up that far, would probably be not too bad here. But I'm probably going to advance my six pounder up with my line. Same with my howitzer, I suspect. Okay. Uh, which one's my battle line? My main line is here. When attacking an enemy with super Quiet, you. my cavalry up onto the hill. The 12 pounder isn't, doesn't want to engage the enemy general, that's okay. So they may well, I don't, they couldn't deploy straight into the woods, so I want to say they must be stationary somewhere. Okay, the 12 pounder is now starting to, to engage the general staff, it could be a range issue. It would appear so, because they've immediately stopped. Let's unlimber. Yes, I'm still getting used to what um, the effective ranges of things. My general can advance into the woods. So let's run up a light howitzer unit on a light cavalry unit on both flanks. Okay, so you've got eyes on the twelve pounders. Starting to load. They're starting to load up. Hello, regiment of foot. Need a lance, lean infantry. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. When I can't pronounce words, I just start saying them funny. Because I start to think, well, at least I must be getting kind of close. My twelve pounders are probably gonna go join my sixes on the flank. 
They're running into the centre, which is useful. Ha, ah, cavalry. Seven pound a howitzer of... Our general is under the, the, the swines! But still, if they can engage my general from here, that means my howitzer is free to unlimber, because I'm assuming they're going to advance, if that's the effective firing range. We should be able to get a little bit closer. But they're letting me advance into the woods, which is great. It's got line infantry, flanker. This is the light infantry. So things are looking quite good on to swing around on the right flank, I've got to say. Wait, foot Jaeger. Okay, my house is now opening up. So it's forever their cavalry, that's the concern. My front line is almost in position. Focusing on my foot guards. Advance out of the woods. Stay wide on the right flank, just for, just for now. They're doing a lot of running, which is good, because it means that they may not be tired, whereas mine will be fresh. Some of these guys are actually hidden, they're not going to be seen until they pop out of the woods. That's part of the reason why they're focusing on the foot guards, I would imagine. Hello, the light horse unit. Run the foot guards and run the light infantry. Push out my cavalry on the right flank. There's the horse guards in the distance. Plus a unit of the foot guards. So I'm not going to want to advance up on the left flank very much. There's a unit of horse guards on the right. My infantry units have shown themselves to engage the light dragoons. Let's try and draw them into action first. My cuirassiers are ready to attack the second horse guard on the right. Stay ready. Not sure who they're going to charge, if anyone. The six pounders can just engage whoever they like. Drop some of these units into squares. Good, so now because we've drawn the cavalry in on the right flank we're going to be okay you men get out of formation let's begin begin to push on the right flank let's get our fen our um, cavalry to continue to push on the left light horse. Let's get my cuirassier up front. I need to get my troops on the flank around a bit more decisively.
Get my crusty iron to the light horse. Let's try and attack their their carabine, their um, heavy cavalry, my hussars. They should gain some of that morale back because they're heavy cavalry and we're light. But I'm hoping I can charge this unit around into the flank as well. My right flank needs to run. I want my cuirassier to engage the light artillery on my third light horse to attack the 12 pounder. Got their cavalry on the left, the heavy cavalry. Pull our light cavalry back. So they're putting themselves in, in a position where we can quite comfortably surround and destroy them. So we're going to pull this line back. Let's get my 12 pounders to a limber. Good stuff. Horse guard are going to try to charge us. Let's hit them with both my cavalry units. Oh, blasting this unit in the flank. Well, I might just charge them in to deal with them. Get my 12 pounders firing round shot in the centre. Get my howitzer dropping shells into the centre. You can't run away, Curacier, because you've got another horse guard regiment coming in. They're really clustering together. Which isn't good for them. So my light cavalry is vulnerable here. So the second light foot have fallen, so let's pull my cavalry back. Our men are running for Yeah, I expected so. They're just getting tired. Or maybe uh, the artillery fire from the six pounders didn't help. There we go. They're starting to respond to what's, go what's happening. It's another general's bodyguard unit. So let's send in my light horse. Yeah, I've charged quite close to our line. We have killed their general, sir. Now they must break. It's another general knocked out. Well, my cavalry came back. All these gunners focus on the 3rd Regiment of Line. Oh god, some guys got hit directly by the cannonball and thrown backwards. This Hussar unit hit the 8th. Yeah, they're starting to find themselves surrounded. The 8th Regiment of Foot are broken. Let's get all my artillery to focus on the men in the centre, because this unit, cavalry unit, can hit the 3rd Regiment. God, look at this. Just a clump of men.
terrible outcome for them. Okay, so we've knocked out that, in that unit, so we can start to try and surround the enemy, but it looks like they're all going to start breaking. These poor, poor souls. Bring Mr. Skulderbrand across. I think most of my foot artillery can cease fire. I don't think many of these chaps stand much chance escaping. That's the first foot guard, so understandably they're standing. go. Let's bring in the troops. Bring in the cavalry. And have at them. Most of these units just, well, this entire army. We're going to want to kill them all. Well, as many as we can. Ceasefire, the howitzer, just gained a lot of experience. It's, fr it's a bit frustrating that more of my units haven't gained experience, but I'll, considering how important cavalry units have been, gaining some good experience with those units seems like an absolute must. There's one unit of how it says that's still firing. I should probably just try to keep my infantry out of it. Ooh, this unit. I should get a few kills from the foot guards. You men attack the 6th regiment. Yeah, they're shattered. So you guys might get ready to go after... Yeah, I'm going to continue, for no if nothing else, than just to mop up a bit of... Um, a bit more experience. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. I know they are, but they haven't got to run after them. They've only got to walk. So you try... Go after the howitzer. You men go after the artillery. You go after the regiment of foot. The general's still going after... Some of these 
Line infantry. Which it's now... They've now shattered. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. There we go. Now it's everyone against the last unit of artillery, which... You know... The men are fatigued, try and make sir, them and run. Rest a while. Just because I've got some of my men are... Exhausted. But just get out there and double time and knock out those gunners. But yeah, except they are just... <laughs> my men are very tired and... This pursuit style warfare isn't really suited for Napoleon Total War 3. Well, there we go, that should be everybody. Um, but I might have to chop the recording and wait till everyone's actually fled. Because the people there, there are still a handful of units on the field. So, just a second, everyone, I'll bring you guys back in a minute. And we're back. It took a bit of time, they just ran off the field. But that is quite a decisive victory for the Kingdom of Sweden. So there we go, we have just destroyed that garrison. And we are going to peacefully occupy it. You could liberate it, but I don't want to deal with any rebellions at the moment. Not on my frontier with France. Good, so we can repair the Army Staff College. We can get this harbour here to start to build a brig as a garrison. Mr. Von Essen, you can stay where you are. Oh god! Oh god! There he is! There's the man himself! But he can only go one direction! He can only go west or east! So will he go to attack Cleves, which is... Un which is... has been um, through the wars a bit? Or will he go west to try and bolster the defence of Brussels because Mr. Von Essen... Well, next turn, he should have some quite good mobility. So he should be able to get to Cleves. Um, so I've got another army in recruitment here. So you've got three slots left, and you're going to recruit two more units. So let's get another unit of let's get another unit of militia, just because militia are cheap, and I should really use them because they're not actually that bad. Then after that, I probably want to start building another army, whose job it will be to sit in Finland and just keep an eye on the Russians. I don't want to stop recruiting armies. I mean, if I can destroy Napoleon, that would be great. And now Britain no longer has to raid my port. I could probably stand... To, well, I don't know what ships those are, but I might move... a Scandinavian frigate up to Rotterdam. Just to ensure coverage. Is there still a limit? There is. There's quite a hard limit on what I can actually recruit here within. Well, what I can recruit as Sweden. Um, but that's a bit alarming because Napoleon is. He gives his men crazy buffs on the battlefield. Crazy buffs. Um, so Gothenburg is about to research division of labor. Schleswig was about to research. Was already researching something else. But then we got given it, so you might actually go on to land drainage to get plus 10% wealth generated by farms. Well, no, we don't really need money. That's the, that's the problem. Um, we get conscription, in, conscript infantry tactics, because we, we do have a reasonable militia component, so any more, more morale, the better. Although, could just start... Just do a Hail Mary up towards national propaganda because you get plus one morale in battles across the board. Ooh, that's just reminding me something about the passports. So, Amsterdam currently has a banking house. Do I want a banking house? Well, money is useful, but we're getting, getting back to having reasonable amounts of cash. <laughs> plus our war chest. So what I might want to do is change the building type. So I don't want a university. Supply Depot and things like that definitely have their advantages due to replace replenishment rates. But I want a Masonic Lodge. I want some spies, because I currently have no spies. Yeah, just all gentlemen. Some of them, some of them are not even very good gentlemen. Okay, let's hit enter. Oh, 
Napoleon's gone for Cleves, but he's not attacked. So, depending on the mobility of Mr. Von Essen, he can begin to attack France's most dangerous general. And I'll have the garrison at Cleves as support as well. That will be very useful. I think this force, I would like to have the force I'm recruiting in Stockholm pushed up towards Naples. Not Naples. Brussels. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of Naples. To maintain the pressure against the French Empire. That's what I would like. But I am nervous about... Ooh. Yes, we, we can trade. Why don't you start fighting against the French, though? Well, not too much, actually. Don't fight against the French too well. Although the Ottomans don't really have a border, it's only naval stuff. So Cleves is besieged. Grenadier, Voltigeur, 12th Legion or Regiment, Infantry de Ligne, Garde Nationale, Garde Nationale. They're not full strength. Some art decent artillery. But Mr. Von Essen does have the range, and that's really. that's huge. Um, first thing I want to do, though, is to take maybe my heaviest ships up to Stockholm to bring Lars Roma's force into action. Yes, yeah, so we've recruited the last heavy cavalry unit there, so let's get one of you and a unit of Dragone Regimente, because heavy cavalry. Plus, my Light Dragoons, plus a unit of Hussar. I mean, I like the army composition I've got now. I maybe might... I might experiment with dual howitzer plus a 12, because I'm not necessarily sure the 6s are providing me much useful information. Let's get two units of... That unit of line infantry plus, let's get a unit of... Bell Jaeger, because you can recruit a good amount of those. Good. So when that, that force is ready, they can take over here and keep leapfrogging through northern France. If I add more down here, I can probably maybe push down to Strasbourg and cut off the eastern forces of Russia. Prague has rebelled, which is f funny. I can't get to it, though. But. But. This has to be the thing to do. Let's go and attack Boney. So what's he got? He's got a lot of experience. Light SRs, heavy cavalry, two units of howitzers, plus a artillery unit? I'm not sure which one that is. Skirmishes. Have they got any okay, Grenadier Francais, Sapper, Voltages? I don't see any old guard. I know they've got Grenadier there, but that's not they aren't the the grenadiers, the old guard. My French is terrible. Well, let's attack Bonaparte. I what that means. Maybe he's the leader? National leader? Maybe? What? Oh, he has a has the balloon bonus that allows him to see the enemy deployment first. I don't know, Napoleon in his balloons. Well, let's get ready to take him out. We're not going to want to take too long at this, because the movement is the movement it takes so long. What I don't want is to have, you know, to be really coy at the start, but then not have time to bring my reinforcement army to bear, because they've got too much distance to cover. Oh, that's actually really nice terrain. Okay, so. Let's in delta up the middle. Let's take my 12s and my 6s are going to advance behind my line to hopefully deploy on this like higher slope. My howitzers are going to be ready. Let's group my Bjornborg plus a unit of foot guard unit, a grenadier unit, plus light infantry unit on the right flank. Then on the left, two light infantry units plus a skirmish unit. We've got to be really careful because we don't have much in the way of 
Well, actually, 12, six, the 12s could deploy over here. Provide some early cover fire. But we don't have much in the way of cavalry, and that's quite a significant thing. But, we, but it means we also we do have lots of infantry. So... Okay, so we can see where well, there's a mine, some defences that have been placed. It's going to take a bit of time to get into position. We know where the bulk of their army is. Twelve pounders don't really have a target. Can you engage the horse guards at that range? No, you can't. That's too far away. The general can take position on the high ground. Hello? Militia unit. So there would have been the militia unit that placed the defences. Oh, good hit! Another fight against the darn French. There's a big block of them back here. Holy Christ. Well, let's hope they wait. Because the longer they wait, the more we get to bring our guns up into position. 13th foot guard, sappers. They look... Oh my god. They look terrifying. The eye textures, it doesn't look like they have eyes. I think they do. They're just not very... Oh my god. No, they don't. The warriors of the undead fight for Napoleon. Oh my god. It's got some grenadier... Some um, dragoons coming in. Looks like we might have some opportunities to advance on the left. Twelves are getting some good hits. Well, here twelves can go after the the um, horse grenadier guard. That would be useful. Let's unlimber my six pounders. They'll take a bit of time to get into formation, so there's no immediate worries there. I don't understand why they've not. I mean, I know they've got the balloon, but they're spotted. My men are still too close. <laughs> Sorry, 11th Regiment. Form square. Form square. My infantry should deploy squares. You men advance up the left flank. I couldn't get that militia unit in time. And get some howitzers to attack the sappers. My militia could well rout. They have been caught out by a unit of horse guards though. 12 pounders just smacked a shot into the side of those dragoons. Good. Another unit of artillery. Form you men plus these men. Okay, France is deploying. I mean, what's the bet that they come back and start attacking this light infantry unit?
theory, these men should make ready and pour quite a good volley into the flank of the uh, horse guards. We've got some musket fire on the right flank. They did put a volley into the horse guards. Good. I think I still want to push my men forward a bit to get even further down the hill. My sixes do have a target though. My howitzers can retarget the centre of this line. It looks like Napoleon does not want to commit his reserve. Cavalry are back, so that light infantry unit forms square. The 10th Regiment should start to open up on the Garde Nationale. I'm going to run my flank up. Because no one's actually engaging them yet. Ooh, good volley. You men drop into square too, because it looks like the 18th are still interested. So they are redeploying away from the left. Which, first, what they want to do is great. My cavalry protects the flank from getting rolled up. You men advance. So it looks like we can roll up the flank. So the 11th Regiment, once you guys have pivoted, you can begin engaging the French line. The, French, the last French cavalry have not yet decided to engage. Napoleon's all the way at the rear. Doesn't want to expose himself. But if he does, my lighter cavalry will get him. Yeah, they're responding to our push up on the flank. human advance to head them off. That is an opportunity too good to ignore. Send my cavalry around the flank. If we can destroy the second light foot. The AI's rip caught onto that. So my right flank is beginning to get into position. This unit of infantry is not happy about the fire. Got to be careful. Be careful we don't overextend. So the 8th Regiment are going to begin engaging the, te the 11th at range. Good. So who is back here? That's all their artillery, isn't it? The Dragoon is going to smash into the 21st Regiment of Foot. And this Light Dragoon unit is going to attack here because they've, they've got a flanker, flank chasseur here. Oh, there's the there's the Polian. He's in the centre. Okay. I 
So we've hit the line infantry unit. They may well withstand us because Napoleon is, in, is on the field. I think it's worth risking our cavalry to try and get Mr. Napoleon. Oh my god, we got him. We got Napoleon. Let's get my cavalry back. My regiment, Jagoon, is going to hit the 21st regiment on the right. Get these units out of formation. Or out of square. Although it looks like they do want... Cavalry is coming back. Maintain the push, because now we should have enough units to provide some actual support to my cavalry back here. Okay, I'm standing ready, except for this guy. He's not interested. Okay, the cavalry still fancying their chances. They always, they really don't like it when I dump. I mean, oh, I say, they don't like it when I throw my men into squares. I'm like, no, obviously not. So my light cavalry going to charge down the flanker chasseur. The jeune guard. Which I, if I know my basic French, which I'm not going to be confident about, that means yellow guard. So the jeune guard have deployed, fired off their volley. So on the flank, we've not been doing as much manoeuvring as we could. How it's a sh how it's a balls inbound. So they've hit the fourth light horse. Send my dragoons into the eleventh militia unit. My flank is doing very well start to create a bit of a kinks line. Twenty first Regiment of Infantry have returned. Let's make sure all our artillery is attacking units in the centre. Okay, running's usually a bad thing. But there are instances where you just need to make them run tactically. This Grenadier Regiment's going to route through the 9th Regiment, so they're going to lose a lot of men. Which, of course, is ideal for us. So they're now about to run through my Varvade. The artillery appied back here is not really firing, it's just limbered up. And because of our slightly inefficient positioning over here, we don't have a full surround, full encirclement of the enemy. These two units probably stand to do something like that instead. So 
So you men engage, push forward there, you men push forward there to shoot into the flank of the Voltageur. There's the sappers. Sappers of the damned. These infantry units are not gonna. The Voltagers aren't gonna like that one bit. Go on, second regiment. Give them a volley. They're right there. Yeah, they're upset. Our men are running. Eh, it's militia. It's understandable. Never mind men running, as long as they come back. Like these guys, my god. They're gonna get slaughtered to a man if they keep running that way. It's a Belgian guardsman. Got hats that look more like dragoons. All my artillery cease fire. Voltages, Grenadiers, Voltage. To be honest, my cavalry could probably deal with the Voltage there. There we go. I thought my militia probably come back. So the Voltages are skirmishes. They're a light infantry unit. So my dragoons are going to have their way with them. Yeah, there they go. So you've got the Voltager and the unit of Sapper still alive. Don't worry about the men who are running away. Just line up my entire army to complete the kill box. Except for this unit, they just cease fire. And the Voltagers, the, the Sappers, they're still pretty happy. They've not lost many men. Bjornborg are marching into the Grenadiers. They're going to lose a handful of men. <laughs> the men are fatigued, sir, and must rest away. It's the cavalry, isn't it? Yep, there it is. There we go. The last handful of units run into position to destroy the enemy. The general hasn't been entirely useful. But it's been a bit of a war of manoeuvre. The sappers have broken. And they're losing men thick and fast now. And there go the last unit of voltages. Excellent. So that's our first engagement against Napoleon and he's fallen rapidly. Good stuff. Let's left. Jean Baptiste Calon, two units left. Excellent. So you men, you can hold here. This force is going to embark and sail over to Amsterdam. So I would like to send someone south to Strasbourg, but I do want to have a good core of troops attacking north towards the French capital. Trait gain, steady under fire from Reinhold Backstrom. That's the general that was reinforcing. He didn't actually get involved. I'll take it. 
Trait gain, attacking general. Plus one to command when attacking on land. That's the commander, Mr. Von Essen, whom I used, who is quite the commander. But what he really needs is heavy cavalry. So may actually take two units of heavy cavalry and send them down to the front immediately. So you've hopped on to poverty control laws. Great. Gets me a manufactory. Which in theory should have got me, well, getting a, a recent, building a factory should enable us to get Macadam Rose. They, they definitely should be there. I don't know why I can't get them, but whatever. Oh, noise. There we go. <laughs> uh, right, okay. So there's no one we can trade with who we would like to. We're maintaining good relationships with all of our allied partners. <laughs> the remnants of Napoleon's army has fallen back to Brussels. Good. Good stuff. There's a real chance I might have to dial up the uh, unit caps again for my troops because I'm going to start to need more armies than I can get. <laughs> Don't worry. Soon the France, the French will collapse. Yeah, we could take a bit of time to regroup, reorganize. I might actually get Mr. Von Essen back to Amsterdam. You men embark. Oh no, that was a silly move, wasn't it? Because this force can go there. You can s maybe. Well, no. Well, as we've got. Castle to protect us. To protect us from Stuttgart attacking north, because this is their land. We can send these troops down and attack Strasbourg and bottle them in. Maybe. Well, Swi Switzerland is an ally of the French, correct? Oh no, they're independent. Well, not for long, they ain't. Apart from that. Yeah. Just. Carry on. Ooh, the French are sending troops east into Prussian territory, or Saxon territory. Potential to cause problems there. Ooh, they they now have a front line with the Prussians. You can sh yeah, they took Prague. They've taken Prague, so now Prussia has an enemy they can focus on now, without worrying about us. Or without just having loads of troops sat within their borders. Spanish. The Kingdom of Spain's also pushing in the centre. So we've got poverty control laws. They go straight on to uh, land drainage, plus 10% wealth generated by farms. Some of these are probably better, but I don't think there are any critical technologies we must focus to. Army sabotaged. Oh, that's the garrison at Hanover that's, that, this, that was involved. Let's get you back here. Oh no, that's Mr. Skaldebrand. Damn it. I can make you garrison the city. Uh, building constructed. Factory in Cleves. Can't upgrade it yet. Got our mine. A couple of other buildings are being built. Recruitment report. Artillery in Sweden and a brig in the North Sea. So... Uh, Rotterdam is protected. I don't know what you've got. But I'm going to blockade you so I can send a brig to raid Calais. And then get back home. I'm probably going to want to stop using full army, full my decent navy to transport my army and maybe rely on it walking into theatre. Potentially, because I can't really afford to have my navy stuck acting as a, um, a transport fleet. There's another French army. They're not quite sure what direction they want to go. Ah! Some surrender demanded of Hanover. No. I mean, okay. 
This could go really badly wrong. Well, if it does go wrong, I just redu I can redirect an army. But my god, who attacks me with this? Let's try it. To the very least, in this episode, you guys will know what I'm going to be up to. <laughs> it might mean that I have to send troops east and maybe push against Prague myself. I mean, I shouldn't lose this battle. So everything they've got is weak but the auto resolve was adamant that, that was going to happen okay I want to do a bit of a switch because my militia can form a pike square formation my actual partisans can't do anything So I want my Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack. Okay, yeah, the howitzer have started to fire. I want my my um pikes out on the flank. I think I need to get my cavalry involved. Well I have to get my cavalry involved, but I'm just looking at what they've got and it's like it's all incredibly elite. So I'm there going, well, how are they? Don't upset my infantry. I mean, I'm looking at that and going, how is this going to go wrong? But, you know, that's what, impo that's what Total War does. It makes you look at things and go, well, that can't go wrong. Sure enough, it does. Yeah, we're now within... See, look at my... my... Dragoon's morale just went straight through the floor. So all my partisans to run into the square. That's where I want my, my partisans to go. Carabino winning oh, decisively. Look at that. So now my hopes and dreams rely on my militia because my cavalry can't do squat. Well, look, those partisans are going to run. They can't rely on my militia forming square. Got again. No, form square. <laughs> okay, that's their artillery gone. That's their infantry gone. The carabiner attacking my troops, which are in Pike Square formation. So they should die, or rout at the very least. We may only be infantry, but we are in square, so... That partisan unit might actually even come back. Just 
still engaging the carabiner. My dragoons did come back. Yes, going after that general. I mean, they're exhausted, so they should asterisk be done. You've been charging. No, but you're close. General staff. So get in here. Attack that general. Keep on picking at him. Hey, my other partisan unit came back. You guys may as well form up another flank. My dragoons will, like, my dragoons will fix it, or no one will. Well, all my infantry will. It will just take a while. What a mess. I'm going to need some support. <laughs> they both route at the same time. But that's still a win <laughs> for the garrison of Hanover. <laughs> what a mess. What an absolute mess. They've still got ten men left, so they can still raid us. Okay, so maybe we have to pick a front that we're going to be offensive on. I need to bring some troops to support my the flank near Hanover, which is going to be the new army. Because I can no longer rely on the Prussians providing that protection. Then we're going to use wherever our offensive is going to be. That's where we're going to have two armies, one to go in, bash the enemy down, and then hopefully a second army. Oh, excellent, a spy in Holland. There he is. Our banking house, our, our um, Mason Masonic Lodge isn't even built yet. Okay, let's get my spy down to Prague, because I want visibility. You have to deploy your troops just on the coast. You have to bring Mr. Roma at least down to here for now. So let's take that's heavy cavalry we need. So when that regiment's done, we're going to bring them down to support the front. So Anders Skordebrand is built, is, is up to full strength. You're still waiting on upgrades. So Cleves and Hanover are fortified. In terms of tech, let's hit end turn. Is that Napoleon? Is he back? Yeah. Many, many armies. Many armies. Uh, no, Britain. I'm going to reject all of that. I don't want to give Britain any technologies because they're going to be a future enemy. I'm going to land and invade the British Isles. quite sure what you were up to. Marching up to my army, then marching back. Don't declare on me, Prussia. I will destroy you. Reino de España. Let's bring you to 
towards the Dutch front. So is that Napoleon again? Yeah, it is Napoleon. He's lost all his experience. <laughs> I think I would like to bolster that flank. Send an army forward to attack Brussels. Let them attack me and then I defend. Tech advances. Conscript infantry tactics has been done. We're on to Grand Battery. Then it's we've done land drainage. Then it's on to Joint Stock Company. So you actually go on to probably national propaganda. That plus ten to diplomatic relations plus one morale is pretty handy. You carry on with your upgrades, although you may go for. Interchangeable parts to reduce upkeep. Steam engines are also useful because so many things can be upgraded, but I want to reduce my upkeep. Let's get my Dragon Air Dragoon Regiment down here. Although, really, it wants to go to Holland. So then you guys recruit another Dragoon unit to replace it. Let's pick up another general. Sv Sven Zettisberg. Uncle to Sven and a natural scout. Yes, please. I think this time I want to get some Finnish infantry involved. So let's get two more units of those. In terms of this force, you've got a line infantry unit and you've got a skirmisher unit. Let's get a unit of... 48... Well, we've already got a unit of Fort Jaeger. Get a unit of Fort Jaeger. Plus two in Delta, plus three militia. We're up to nearly 7,000 income per turn, which is pretty big. Lots of our towns are growing quite well. And to be honest, what I'm probably going to do is end the episode here, because we're actually making some quite good progress. Hessen would be a useful territory to take, but they are allied with Prussia and Saxony, and they're not at war with the French. That means we don't have to worry about this section quite so much. It's just here. Where they can cross over, trespass in Prussian territory, then attack Hanover. The devils. No, I might do. Recruit general here. Georg Karl von Doblin. So if you march outside the city, you can seek a bit of support. You can recruit two in Delta to come down to bolster the garrison at Hanover. Um, cool, but I think looking at the time, I'm going to end the episode here because we've got some. We've, we, we're going to tee things up to a tee things up for a useful battle in future. But looking at the timer, it's definitely time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the continuing adventures of Sweden. Cheers, everyone.